Welcome in to another edition of SE Checks In, presented by First Texoma National Bank. We've got Savage Storm football alum Donnie Hamilton with us. Donnie, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Thanks I'm, for having me. I'm good, man. Thanks for uh, taking time and sitting down with us. With us, uh, Donnie played football for the Savage Storm. Uh, played in a lot of games. Graduated. Went on. Lives in Philadelphia. No, um, in Maryland. Maryland. Sorry. Uh, so I know you're an Eagles fan, and it's, it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was gonna bring that up. So it's uh, it's interesting because uh, when the when the Eagles play and the Cowboys play, uh, I look <laughs> forward to the banter with the teammates, with you guys going back and forth on social media. Because uh, when the yeah. Eagles lose and the Cowboys win, there is about ten to fifteen individuals that come after you. And then when yep. the Eagles win and the Cowboys lose, it's you versus them all. So yeah, uh, you know, me against the world. Yes, sir. <laughs> so uh, so there it is. So. You know, growing up, you want to talk about just, you know, where you come from and why you chose Southeastern. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I'm from Arlington, Texas, originally. And um, as far as my upbringing and everything, I, um, you know, I come from a two parent home. And so I was blessed and fortunate enough to, you know, have, you know, two parents that love each other and have been married for over 30 years. And, um, you know, growing up, they instilled a lot of values um, into my brother and I and, you know, it was always yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Uh, you know, they definitely instilled the importance of, you know, having good character and always doing the right thing, you know, even when nobody is looking. Um, also, um, you know, whatever you start, make sure you finish and, you know, giving full effort. And so, um, you know, with my dad being, uh, you know, having served 10 years in the uh, US Army, you know, our household was very structured and um, and so he he made sure that we were um, on the straight and narrow path uh, towards success. Um, also, as far as um, you know, my upbringing, you know, they my parents made sure that we were active in sports. You know, sports is the one thing that keeps a lot of children out of trouble and out of the streets and out of you know um, you know out of incarceration and everything. And so it was very important. Uh, for us to play sports. And so growing up, I also played uh, football and basketball and ran a little bit of track and stuff. Now, to answer your other question, as far as why Southeastern? So I chose Southeastern. Um, really, it's funny. I feel like it was, it's one of those things where Southeastern kind of cho chose me. Mm -hmm. And um, and, and th this is how. Um, so here I am after my freshman year um, at Bellhaven University out in Jackson, Mississippi. And, um, you know, I came off a pretty good freshman year. You know, I started as a freshman, um, but academically, um, you know, I didn't measure up uh, to the same success that I had on the field. So here I am, um, a failure. <laughs> and, um, you know, I um, reached out to um, an individual, a former Southeastern player who was here at the time and, um, you know, told him my situation and everything. And he's like, Hey man, um, you know, um, you know, you should come here, you know, it'll put you a lot closer to home, you know, to put you two hours away from home instead of six and a half. Mm -hmm. Um, and also I can put you in contact with, uh, coach Richards. And so I was like, okay. And so after I did a little bit more research, reached out to coach Richards and, uh, the rest is history. So that's how I landed at Southeastern. So that's, that's why I say Southeastern chose me more so than, uh, me choosing it because prior to that, I never even heard of Southeastern Oklahoma state. So. Well, we're, we're sure glad you came here. So, you know, you come here, talk about getting to play at Southeastern, you know, with you, with your years and your teammates and what was it like playing at Southeastern for you? Playing the Southeastern, um, it was awesome. You know, the camaraderie and um, the bonds and the relationships that I developed over time, you know, it, it was, um, you know, it was definitely, definitely a journey. Um, don't get me wrong, there were some ups and downs and stuff, but, you know, uh, anytime that you play a, um, a barbaric sport and, um, you know, where you have to devote a lot of time and energy, um, as well as devoting time and energy to, to academics, um, you know, it gets a little stressful at times, but aside from that, you know, um, traveling, you know, every other week and, you know, um, being on that defensive bus and cracking jokes and mm -hmm. laughing and, um, you know, acting the fool, um, you know, in the hotels and eating Golden Corral and pigging out, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, it, we definitely, um, it was definitely a journey and, um, you know, it was definitely something that, you know, in retrospect, you know, I can really 
appreciate and, um, you know, appreciate those times and, and reminisce on quite a bit. You mentioned Golden Corral, now <laughs> being an adult, being out, out of it. I do miss those, uh, those free meals where you could eat everything you wanted and not have to worry about anything. So absolutely. Yeah, I do. I do miss those. So I'm going to ask you this, you know, what was it like being in a Dallas Cowboys locker room, being a Eagles fan? You know, the way I look at it, I mean, quite frankly, um, I think, you know, with me being a Philadelphia Eagles fan, is, I think it's quite fitting because, you know, I've always looked at myself as somewhat a, of an outcast anyway. Um, and with me being an outcast, sometimes, you know, I get unwanted attention. And, um, and, and it's crazy because, you know, being a fan of the Eagles, it, it kind of translates to, to my career now in the United States Air Force. And um, sometimes I do get unwanted attention, but it's for good reasons, of mm -hmm. course. But, um, you know, Dallas fans are, are Dallas fans. <laughs> um, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm a, I'm a behave. Um, I won't say too much, but, um, you know, it, it, it's – I'm used to it. You know, I'm built for it. I get harassed every year. It's nothing new. But, you know, I stand my ground and, um, you know, and fly eagles fly. <laughs> I like I said before, I, I, I love getting on social media and seeing uh, Devin Drake tag you. Where's Donnie, where's Donnie Hamilton at today? I just – Chad Laurie. Shout I out. Love shout out to Devin Drake, man. Shout <laughs> out. <laughs> so, uh, after you get done playing at South Asian, you graduate. Uh, talk about what you got your degree in. Oh, um, so I studied biology. And, um, and so uh, it was very – very strenuous, you know, it's a very strenuous program. Um, it's definitely not for the week, but um, I do want to give a shout out to Southeastern. Um, though my, you know, though my words and my thoughts are a little biased, but um, Southeastern's biology uh, program is, is hands down one of the, you know, it's a world-class uh, program. And, and in my opinion, probably one of the best programs in the country. Um, and so anybody who's studying biology, um, as strenuous and as tough as that program is, you know, I just encourage you to remain vigilant and uh, remain focused on your studies um, and, and just keep pressing through. But yeah, I have uh, my undergrad, uh, or excuse me, my major is in biology and uh, I have a minor in occupational safety and health. Nice. That's the interesting thing when we talk to uh, our, our former alums, it's awesome to hear their stories about, you know, their unique degrees. And one thing that, I, that I'm starting to learn is you know southeastern's got a great academic plan for anybody you know that that's the that's the the thing that makes me proud of this university so you graduate uh talk about what you did after you graduated after you graduated where uh you went and uh where you where you are now uh yeah so i i'll say um you know as soon as i graduated uh from southeastern oklahoma uh you know those were that was a very humbling time um, so I, I had always had my mind and my heart set on, um, you know, joining the military. Um, and, but as we all know, like whenever you join the military, you know, that's a process. You don't just walk into a recruiter's office and then you're on the bus the next day um, at basic training getting yelled at, you know, so it's a process. Um, and so in the meantime, you know, I, um, you know, got on at uh, First Convenience Bank. And so I was a personal banker for some time. Um, I realized pretty quickly that, um, you know, that's, you know, that's not really for me. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a salesman and, you know, everything was just numbers based, you know, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, every month you have to meet your quota, you have to open X amount of accounts. And so it's a very dog eat dog type of hustle. Um, and though I'm built for it, it's just, it, it just wasn't my thing. And so luckily um, the Air Force and, and the whole recruiting process started to work out for me, and um, I ended up getting a date to ship out to basic training out in Lackland Air Force Base out in San Antonio, Texas, and, um, and that's where I, you know, embarked on my uh, eight-week journey in basic training, uh, where it was probably one of the most challenging times um, that I've had in quite some time, and then from there, um, I ended up going to tech school, which is um, my tech school is basically um, where you go to learn your craft or learn your skill. And so my job um, is emergency management. And so what we do is we plan for, respond to, and recover from any type of natural disasters. And, um, and so after tech school, after I graduated tech school at Fort Leonard Woods, Missouri, 
Um, then I arrived at my first duty assignment at Joint Base Andrews Air Force Base uh, right here in Maryland, which is where I'm currently at right now. So you've been there the whole time? Yeah, I've been there the whole time. Now, um, the last couple of weeks, or excuse me, the last couple of months, um, I've actually been working at Joint Base Anacostia Bowling, um, which is here, well, which is in D.C. So D.C. is not far from here at all. Um, and what I'm doing currently is, you know, I'm pretty much assisting that team over there and helping uh, to build up the emergency management program um, by way of developing their installation uh, emergency management plans, which consist of just a bunch of checklists um, in regards to, you know, our response efforts for natural disasters and aircraft incidents, active shooters, so forth and so on. So, you know, you talk about emergency management. Are, do you have a region that you cover or are you just, are you on call to go anywhere around the United States if, if something were, you know, a natural disaster like a hurricane or or, you know, things like that, you know, are you always on call or how does that work? Excellent question. So, uh, you know, being an employee for Uncle Sam, um, you know, you're technically always on call in a mm -hmm. sense, but to answer your question, um, so no, we're not gonna, you know, with me being here in Maryland, you know, as you know, Hurricane Sand, no, not Sandy, uh, Sally, excuse me, Hurricane Sally is, um, has already hit Alabama as of now. As you can see, I'm still here in Maryland. So we don't, respond to uh, natural disasters throughout the whole nation. We just pretty much stick to our jurisdiction, stick, you. you know, to this area, um, you know, that I'm currently in. So, you know, you go to your basic training, mm -hmm. you know, how did uh, being a college athlete and playing college football, how did that set you up for that? Did, you know, did any of that stuff translate into, you know, your basic training? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, as you know, being a former, you know, student athlete at Southeastern, you know, everything's about time management, everything is structured, you know, if you're, um, if you're not 15 minutes early to a meeting, you're late, you know, and mm -hmm. so the, um, you know, the military works the same way, you know, you, everything is definitely structured, um, and you have to be on time, time management um, is everything. Uh, you have to be disciplined. You have to follow orders um, as well as give orders at times. And sometimes, you know, whether you're giving or following orders, sometimes it puts you in very uncomfortable positions, you know, but sometimes you have to be, un or excuse me, sometimes you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable in order for you to truly, to truly grow and develop. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Southeastern football has definitely, you know, paved the way and, and set me up for success at basic training, as well as, you know, my day-to-day -day job um, and, 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 you know, in leading uh, the troops that are under me right now. So what does day-to-day -day look like for you? Day-to-day -day is uh, very different. It just depends on what day, depends on the time of year. Um, uh, as far as today, you know, my time consisted of, you know, developing our installation emergency management plan. We need a plan in place for our installation just in case if there's some type of natural disaster um, or an aircraft crash or anything that impacts our installation. We definitely have to, um, you know, have plans in place uh, so that way we can get our installation back up and ru running towards normal operations. And so some days I'll, you know, immerse myself with that. Other days I'll schedule people for CBURN. CBURN stands for Chemical, Biological, Radiological, and Nuclear Defense Training. So with that, my job entails that I'm also a, um, a CBURN defense instructor. And what we do is we pretty much, um, you know, we teach our troops how to survive and how to operate uh, in chemically contested environments. Um, so when you're talking like nuclear warfare and all of that type of stuff, you know, my job is to instruct people on how to properly put on their gas mask, how to properly put on their chemical um, ensemble. So that way those, you know, nerve agents or blister agents or blood agents, um, basically all the, the nasty, harmful stuff, you know, won't affect um, the individuals that we are instructing. So as you can see, like my job is, is different. One day I might be instructing, the other day I might be developing a plan. The next day I might be developing airmen and, and, and doing our in-house training mm -hmm. um, and, and just furthering our job proficiency um, as well as our job competence. How many uh, troops do you have under you? So under me, I have three. Uh, one of them is de uh, deployed. Um, so, um, so yeah, I have a total of three as of now. 
So, you know, around March, everything in, in the world or in the United States started to shut down. Mm. Talk about that. How did you handle that? How, what did your day to day look like? Did it change at all? Or were you still getting up every day and going to work that the idea of working from home? Did that even affect you? Yeah, so, um, you know, just like the rest of the uh, the world and the rest of this country, of course, you know, um, you know, operations kind of shifted and changed for us as well. And um, so, you know, in the wake of social distancing and, and everything, you know, we, we had to, you know, telework and uh, we got pretty familiar with Zoom for a while. And, um, and then after a while, you know, we just slowly but surely just kind of trickled back into the office and um, initially, we started working half days and just only a couple days out of the week uh, where we had to physically show up. Um, but now we're back to somewhat normal operations where we're showing up to work every day. Um, but yeah, it was it was definitely a challenge. And, um, you know, I can def definitely attest to, you know, some trials and errors. But, you know, that's the, the beauty of our military. That's the beauty of this country. Um, you know, we, we just we roll with the punches and um you know we just we go with it and um we dust ourselves off and we just keep pressing forward awesome stuff so how was it with the family being around them pretty much 24 7. Uh, it wasn't bad i mean um you know my daughter i still <laughs> we still dropped her off at daycare so uh we kind of <laughs> had a little break <laughs> you know we still, yeah you know so um and which we were for fortunate by the way because um, you know, with her sitter, um, you know, my daughter is the only child that my sitter, that her sitter watches. So it's not like she was around other children and mm -hmm. it's not like we were exposing her to, you know, to, to the dangers of COVID or anything like that. So, um, so that worked out. Um, and then after we dropped her off, you know, we were able to focus in, um, you know, on our jobs, um, by way of, you know, teleworking, of course. And, um, it worked, you know, I was able to pretty much develop my own schedule. Um, you know, of course, if we had a meeting, you know, I had to dial in, but, you know, in between that, you know, I was able to, um, you know, sleep in a little later than usual and, um, <laughs> you know, work out on my own, of course, and uh, which I do on a daily. So, um, like I said, it was an adjustment, but uh, we rolled with it and uh, we adjusted and now we're back to somewhat, um, you know, normal operations. Awesome. So I ask everybody this, and uh, you know, I love hearing their answers. You know, when I say Southeastern Oklahoma State University, what does that mean to you? You know, Southeastern for me, um, you know, those were some humbling times. And, you know, it took for me to, to, to graduate for me to, to have a true appreciation for what the university did for me. You know, during the time, you know, I was just in such a hurry to just be an adult and to graduate and to to get away from there and make money you know i was just mm -hmm. tired of being a broke college student with no life <laughs> um and i had no life because of you know the degree program that i got into you know I, I i was constantly studying my butt off so i was just ready for a change but like i said you know southeastern it i really didn't get a true appreciation for the institution until i until I graduated and spent some time away from it. And so when I hear Southeastern Oklahoma State University, um, I'm overwhelmed and, and, you know, with a sense of pride. A uh, sense of pride, um, I'm definitely, pr you know, proud of, um, you know, that institution. And, um, you know, I'm always elated whenever I see reports that, you know, we have surpassed our enrollment, mm -hmm. um, you know, statistics. You know, it seems like every year, um, you know, more and more students, you know, across, you know, Texas and Oklahoma is enrolled in Southeastern. So, you know, it, it really, it gives me even more so, um, you know, a sense of pride and it just, it, it truly shows the work, um, you know, that the faculty and staff has, has put in to the university. And it, it, what that tells me is that, you know, Southeastern Oklahoma State University is on the map and it's going to continue to grow and, and, and develop. Um, into a powerhouse, you know, institution. Yeah, we, uh, we actually just released the numbers last week for the first time ever. We have over 5,000 students enrolled. 5,339 students have chosen to go to Southeast Oklahoma State University. Wow, that's awesome. And that so, is awesome. That's one thing that I, that I always love about Donnie is we put, it doesn't matter what we put out, you're always sharing it, you're always liking it, you're always commenting. He's, uh, he bleeds blue. 
Um, so speaking of seeing everything, what do you think about that new weight room? You know, look, I'm proud, but I'm a little jealous. I, oh, I have to say, I'm a little jealous, man. That's some, you know, that's some D1, some Division One, yes. you know, football type of weight room. You know, when you go to any powerhouse, any top five university in the country, any top five college football program, that's the type of weight room you see. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm elated. Um, you know, I was more than happy to contribute to that financially. Yes. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, and I'll continue to contribute in any way that I possibly can for the next generation of, you know, Southeastern athletes, not just football players, um, but athletes in general. But that that weight room is wow that I mean, let's just say, you know, in the near future, I, I, I definitely need to stop by your office and I, you I need you to give me a tour you do. of that weight room. Well, my, my door is always open for you, my man. You can come at any time and we'll get you, we'll walk you through. We'll walk you through the old weight room too, just to, just to get one yeah. last feel in there yeah. you know, under yeah. the stadium. So uh, we, we love it. We're sure proud of it. I'm excited for our student athletes to get to use it. Um, you know, our new student athletes that are coming in and it's the first thing they see. I'm a little yeah. jealous. It's like, man, they, they don't, they don't know, <laughs> you know, uh, right. But it, it's great, and, uh, and and like I said, with that, the turf room right next door to it, the volleyball venue, that our donors really stepped up for that. You being one of them, we can't thank you enough for your support. It means so much to us for our ki and our kids to be able to go in there and work out. It's it's been great. So, well, you got anything else you want to get off your chest? Uh no. Um, you know, just if you could relay the message to the rest of those cowboy fans, man, to lay off of me and. Uh, no, nah, I'm kidding. No, nah, um, in all seriousness, um, in all seriousness, you know, I just, uh, you know, want to thank you for your time and thank you for considering me, um, you know, uh, you know, for this opportunity. And, um, you know, I just first and foremost really want to just congratulate you for your efforts and, um, for the success, you know, um, the same way you've kind of, um, you know, seen some of the things that I've done, you know, I've been tracking you as well. And I've seen, your growth and development over the years. And, um, you know, I definitely want to congratulate you. And, um, and I tell you, man, that suit and tie, man, that, 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 that's very <laughs> fitting. That's very fitting. And it, uh, it looks good on you. Um, but again, you know, <laughs> but again, you know, thank you for your time. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, and in any way um, that I can continue to help and show my support, uh, you just reach out to me, let me know and, um, and, and count it as done. So thank you. You're the man. Well, I appreciate those kind words. Um, we stay in contact often. The uh, the only thing that's missing from this is I I thought about bringing back my mullet just for a couple months to see uh, <laughs> see how that see how that was. But I don't think that would uh, that would go over too well. I don't think people were are ready to see that again. So, <laughs> you know, Donnie, thank you so much. One for your service. Two, being a champion of Southeastern. Three, taking time to sit down with us and and talk about it. You know. We uh, we can't wait for you to come back home and uh, come to your second so come to your second home here and come check out Absolutely. our new facilities. I appreciate yeah. it. Well, Storm fans, Donnie Hamilton, biology major, Savage Storm football player, United States Air Force. Donnie, thank you. Fly Eagles, fly. <laughs>